Welcome to the Open Door Church podcast. We are a church in Enid, Oklahoma, whose mission is to share and show Jesus to Enid, Oklahoma, and the rest of the world. If we can answer any questions you have or help you in any way, please feel free to reach out to us on social media or visit our website at opendoorenid.church. Well, welcome to Church Outside Inside. Didn't know what was going to happen this morning, but we're just glad we can meet in a not wet place. And so, uh, man, thanks for being flexible with us this morning and coming on inside. Man, we are pumped today because we have uh, two girls that are going to be baptized right after church. And then we have two more either next week or the week after or something like that. Um, that are going to be baptized as well. So we've had, uh, God has been working and moving during this time, and and we've had some some girls give their lives to Christ. So we're excited to celebrate that today. Um, I would say that um, I know we normally have kids church, and that will start in June. Um, But let me just say that it doesn't need to be perfect in here, so just, it's cool. Like, I have six kids, and if we will be the loudest table, I promise, okay? And so uh, just, just relax and know that it doesn't need to be perfect in here, and see? Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that, Cora. Okay. Um, but I would just say uh, it's okay. So just take an take a exhale, and, and we're going to do church today, and it's not going to be perfect, but we're not either, so it's all good. Well, uh, I am so excited to start this new message series today, No Place Like Home. And uh, I'll tell you kind of where this came from. Uh, well, growing up, we all had our favorite movie growing up. My favorite movie growing up was The Wizard of Oz. I have no idea why, except for that we owned it, and so I just kept putting it back in the VHS back then, and I'd rewind it and watch it and watch it and watch it. And this movie, uh, basically, if actually, raise your hands if you've seen it, Wizard of Oz, so every person in here pretty much. I'll, I'll give a quick short thing if you haven't. So uh, Dorothy, this girl, she is from Kansas, and she lives on a farm with, with Aunt Em and, and Uncle Henry, and they just do farm life, and it's just pretty laid back probably. And then uh, one day this tornado comes through, and it knocks her in the head, and she goes into this dream world of craziness called the Wizard of Oz, and every character that's in her life all of a sudden is in this dream, this crazy dream. And it was, uh, you know, something for me as a kid, I don't know, I'm a creative person. My imagination went crazy every time I watched it, and I loved it. And anyways, one thing that she kept saying throughout the whole movie is there's no place like, like she wanted to go home, and she kept kind of trying to get there. Um, but the thing that got her home is she just had to click her heels and say, there's no place like home. There's no place like home. Right. And guys, that's what we want our homes to be like. We want our homes to be a place where people are like, man, there, there really is no place like home. We want our kids to feel that way. Our grandkids, our friends, whoever comes into our home, uh, we want them to feel that way, that there's no place like home. And, um, so that's where this idea came from. And I'll be honest with you. I had crazy dreams my whole childhood because of this movie, flying monkeys and the wicked witch of the West. I'm telling you, I had some crazy dreams because of those things, but that's okay. Um, well guys, there's, there's many different types of homes, uh, represented here in this room. And just a few of them, we have your traditional home, a uh, couple parents, couple kids. We have, uh, blended families. We have uh, some families where, where kids have been adopted, um, where the adults have been adopted. We have foster families. Uh, we have grandparents and grandparents that are raising their grandkids, and we have all kinds of different other ways too. And, um, and there, there's just a lot of different ways that our families come together, all types of different homes and home environments. And we also walk into our homes with, with a past. We all um, you know, grew up in a house that either was an awesome God-centered home or some of us, uh, our home was not that great. It was toxic and there's a lot of fighting and craziness. Um, and so we all kind of walk into our home environment with that past. And so, um, but no matter what your home experience was or is, uh, we, I think we can all agree there's no perfect home. There's no perfect home. And But what I want to say to you this morning is that if you didn't come from a healthy home environment, um, if you didn't come from a healthy family, just make sure that a healthy family comes from you. And, you know, the good news is no matter matter how you grew up, you have the ability, with God's help, 
to create a healthy home environment. So that's what we're going to talk about for the next four weeks. And so uh, we're going to look at what the Bible says about having a healthy home. And there's a lot in there. So this is going to be good. It's going to be really practical. And um, so I just want to tell you the next four weeks what we're going to talk about. This week, we're going to talk about just simply a God-centered home. What does that look like? Uh, next week, we're going to look like look at a, a loving home. What does it really mean to have a loving home? Uh, uh, week three will be a family on mission. Like as a family, uh, God has things for you to do in this world besides just sit at home. And then uh, the last week we'll look at Christian community. So like what, uh, it is important for you as a family. It actually affects your home if you are a part of a church family like this. And so uh, you obviously think that's important because you're here today. So at this time, uh, if you have your Bible uh, or a Bible app, I would encourage you to turn to Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 9. Uh, we did not plan on being in here today, so we don't have a whole lot for the screen. Normally we would put it up there, but we didn't have time to do that. And so Deuteronomy 6, uh, 4 through 9, and I'll read it out loud. Um, but the background of this text is Moses, and he's talking to the Israelites. And, and what he's really doing is just encouraging families. He's just encouraging families. And so there's a lot we can take out of this. It's Like I said, it's super practical. And so uh, if you have a place to take notes, maybe on your phone or wherever, I'd encourage you to do that. Um, but let's jump into Deuteronomy 6, uh, 4 through 9. And it says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. And these words I command you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise. You shall bind them as a sign on your head and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. And so... We're going to walk through, you know, one verse at a time here and just uh, talk about what this actually means and, and how this relates to us today. And so uh, the first thing that, that's really, really said here is that there's one God. And he says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And so the reason that this is the first thing there, he's setting the foundation for this whole text here. And the reason he's saying that is because uh, the, there were these people called the Canaanites during this time, and they were polytheistic. And that, that just means that they, they believed in tons of gods. And they prayed to all kinds of gods, the sun, the moon, the stars, all these different things. And what he's saying is, no, there's one God. There's one true God, and so worship him. And then, then he goes into uh, what's called the Shema. And so the Shema uh, was something that they would have prayed every morning and prayed every night. And, uh, and, and you probably recognize it. it says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with your soul, and all your might. And then after that, if you read in Mark, it says, and love your neighbor as yourself. And so again, he's just kind of setting the foundation for this text here. We're worshiping one God, and, and then he just says, we uh, love God and then love others. So it's real simple right at the beginning. And he's just saying, love God and love others. And then, then if, when we uh, get into verse 6 through 9, this is when there's a whole lot of practical stuff here. And this, this is good stuff, so listen up. It says, um, and, and it gets a little more personal, I think, too, for us. And it says, right at the beginning of verse 6, it says, These words I am giving you are to be in your heart. And so, guys, we follow God from the inside out. We follow God from the inside out. Our heart uh, it affects what we do. And in Proverbs 4.23, it says, Keep or guard your heart with all vigilance, for, for from it flows the springs of life. And so I want, what I want to encourage you this morning is that the people that come in your house uh, or the people that live in your house, it really needs to be evident to them that you're a follower of Jesus. Like it should be obvious to people that know you that you are following Jesus with your life. And, you know, I would just encourage you, allow your, your kids, allow the people that, that come into your home to, to see you experiencing God. So, uh, I mean, allow people to catch you praying or reading your Bible or, or talking about spiritual things. Allow people to catch you because most things are caught, not taught. You can say all you want about how much you love Jesus, but your life will tell the story. Okay? And your kids are not dumb. 
and, and we, can, we can say that, that we follow Jesus and we love Jesus and go to church on Sundays, but if they never see you talk to Jesus, read your Bible, uh, talk about Jesus, go to him when things are hard, it's, it's mixed messages and it's confusing, okay? And so uh, I, I just think that we need to display the fruits of the Spirit. Uh, Galatians 5 talks about the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, all those things need to be displayed through our life uh, in our home. And so that's the first thing it says is, um, is that it needs to come from our heart. And then the second thing is that he says, teach them or repeat them to your kids. And so uh, all this is really saying is, man, share with your family what God's teaching you. Share with your family what God's teaching you. If you've been with God, just share with, and this, is, this doesn't need to be like a big spiritual, uh, you know, class. This is just like at the dinner table saying, man, guys, I know that things are crazy in the world right now, um, but I read this verse this morning that talks about how we're not supposed to fear because of who God is in our lives. It's just those simple things, just sharing what God has, has spoken to you, just sharing it in a real simple way in real life with your family. And um, I, I do think it's important for us to, to have a biblical worldview. Help our kids and whoever lives in our house or comes in our home have a biblical worldview. We go to God whenever we don't know what to do. Uh, the answers to everything are in Scripture. And so we're teaching our family uh, to go to God and to talk about real issues because the answers are in Scripture. Um, I would say especially right now, I mean, life is crazy. Like, we, like life has been crazy for a couple months. And I, I mean, I'm actually struggling a little bit to re-enter into life. Like I'm just having a hard time because everything is weird, you know. And, um, and so I don't know if you, if you feel that way, but it, life is crazy. And so, I mean, we need Jesus. We need to be led by him. And these are the moments where we get to bring our kids alongside us as, as we talk to them about, man, what does it look like for us to think about our future? What, is it, what does it look for us to think about um, fear and worry? And what does the Bible say about these things? Um, the, the next part, he, sa he says, talk to them when you sit in your house. And so just really practically, you know, um, maybe think for a second, what are those places in your home? Maybe it's the front porch, the couch, the kitchen table. Uh, for some of us, uh, you know, it, it's all different for all of us probably. But um, as you sit around in your house, just know that you don't have to leave your house to experience God. You don't have to leave your house to experience God. You shouldn't have to leave your house to experience God. And so... <sighs> This is, this is the hard conversation I have to have with myself and everybody in this room. Guys, we got to put our phones up. They're the biggest distraction ever to us experiencing God in our home. And we, we, we get isolated because of our phones. We go in other rooms and we go to other places and we get on our phones and we get on, on screens and whatever. And, and we miss each other and we miss what God can do in our home. And so I just want to encourage you um, to put the phones up and lead by example. Uh, uh, a statistic that freaked me out that I read this week um, that's from right now, and, and uh, maybe the pandemic plays into this, but the average American spends 5.4 hours on their phone right now, and people check their phones an average of 58 times a day. I think those are probably pretty accurate, and that probably is a pretty good average, and I think there was days during this pandemic where it was like 17 hours for me, if I'm honest, and so uh, I think we can all relate. We can get stuck on our phones. Um, but um, I would just say be careful what we invite into our homes. Um, so that's people. I mean, who are you inviting into your home? But what are you inviting into your home? Through movies, through music, um, through whatever your kids are playing on the iPad. Um, let's be really careful and cautious about what we bring in. And um, I think that, that what we talk about when we sit, in, sit around in our house, it really matters. It really matters. The next thing it says when you walk along the road. And so this is just talking about living out your faith in your life, in your community. And, and we're kind of getting back to that. We're kind of getting back to normal, whatever that means. And, um, and so just talk about Jesus in your everyday life. You know, if you pray around the kitchen table at home, do it when you go out to eat too. Don't be ashamed of who you are, you know. Um, and, and, and 
loving your neighbors. This is such an amazing time to love your neighbors. Even this week with the, the storm blowing in, a bunch of branches falling down, there's an opportunity to love the people that live next door to you. And just making sure people are okay, you know? Making sure that everybody uh, that doesn't want to get out, that you can get out for them and go get them milk or whatever. Um, just making sure the people in our life know uh, that, that we love Jesus and we love them. And, um, and so all that really is is us just shining our light into our life. Um, and then, then it says when you lie down and when you get up. Um, man, for me, the morning is my, my time for being, I guess I'm with God all day, but, but that's my really focused time of being in Scripture, talking to God. And, um, and that, that's what works for me. When I was in high school and stuff, I did it at night. Um, I don't know, it just worked better for me then. Um, but now, if I want to have any peace and quiet, it has to be before anyone's awake. And so the morning is my time. And um, so I don't know what that is for you, but, but uh, I would say too that the, the evening, if you have kids, I don't know what it is, but kids, before they go to sleep, their little brains are going crazy. And that's when they are so open to, to spiritual conversations. And that's when they're just, they're wondering what is going on in the world. And they're, they're wondering about spiritual things. And sometimes it's a tactic to not go to sleep. I'm not going to lie. So you got to kind of watch that. Um, but a lot of times, like all of my boys uh, have given their lives to Christ. And every one of them, it was at night before they went to bed because of this. So I'm just saying, um, the morning and night, these are just opportunities. There, there's just some truth here that these are, these are really good times uh, when we're not distracted by the things during the day and we can be with God. And so these are, these are important times in our family. So what I would say is let's not let a screen take away from these beautiful moments with our family where God can do big things. Um, but yeah, wake up, pray for our day, end the day, thanking God for what he did. I mean, just morning and night. Then the last, last piece of, the, of this text it says, uh, and this, this may be the one part that you're like, what in the world does this mean? It says, bind them as a sign on your hand and let them be a symbol on your forehead. Write them on the doorposts of your house and, and on your gates. And so what it's talking about is literally um, the Jews would use, uh, they would have these things called phylacteries. And there's a little black box and it had the scripture in it. And they would literally uh, tie it to their, their wrist, uh, and they would literally tie it to their head. And there are Jews today that still do that. If you see them, um, that's what they're doing. Um, and so they took this literally. Um, I, I personally believe that um, this was meant to be more figurative. Um, but I will say, growing up, uh, I don't know why, but on our, right above our doorbell, we had this little brass plaque that said, As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And I'll, like, I'll never forget that. I don't know why my dad or mom put it there. Um, but, but it kind of like, it sort of sets the tone for people that are coming in your house. You know, you see it right before you ding the doorbell. Um, and that, that's kind of cool. And so that, that is a good reminder. But, but what, what this is really saying, I, I believe, is that it's, we need reminders. We need reminders of who we are and what we're doing as a family. And so that may look like uh, music on in your house, some worship music to remind you of who you are. Maybe it's pictures on the wall that's, that have scripture. Maybe it is uh, leaving your Bibles out, not putting them up. So you see your Bible on the kitchen table. Maybe it is, um, you know, it's, it can be so many different things, but they're reminders that Christ is the center of our home. He's not just a part of it. He's at the very center. And, um, and so I don't know what those reminders are for you or could be for you, but I do think it's important for us to, um, to be reminded, to run into things that remind us that we're a follower of Jesus all the time, in our car, in our house, whatever. Um, side note, and this has nothing to do with my message, but I just feel like I should say this. Um, when people are going through a really difficult time, which you probably know people that are right now, or maybe it's you, the, the thing that they don't need is your advice. What people need when they're going through a hard time is two things. One, they need you to pray for them and tell them that you're doing it and maybe pray for them out loud. And then scripture. Let, let God do his thing, you know? And if they ask for advice, there's your chance. But um, when people are going through a hard time, this is the hardest year I've ever had in my life. The hardest things that have ever happened, happened this year. And I'll just tell you from, from being on the other side of this, that I don't really want people's opinions or their advice. What I really needed was people just to say, man, just, I'm praying for you. I love you. I'm sorry. 
And so, um, so just know that scripture and prayer, they're, they're powerful reminders to us of who Jesus is and what he's done in our lives. And that's a gift that we can give to people all the time. And um, when people I know are going, through, going to the hospital, that's what I send them. I say, I'm praying for you, and I, give them a, and I shoot them a text of a, of a scripture. That, that's what we need. That's what we need in those times. I will say there's times when it's the ministry of just sitting with somebody and not saying a word is very, very important too. That is a side note that has nothing to do with my message, but it needed to be there. Okay. Um, if, this, if, if this text and what we just talked about is overwhelming to you this morning, you're like, Kevin, chill out. Too much coffee. I don't know what your deal is today. That is too much for me and my house. There's no way. The bar is too high. Like, no. Calm down. I feel that too because my house is not perfect, believe it or not, and we have a lot of things that we need to work on too. And so I I just want to say two things to us this morning about all this. That the first thing is just that small shifts in the right direction over time can make a big difference. Just small shifts in the right direction. So that may mean, you know what, guys? We need to chill out on the screens. We've kind of gotten out of control because of Verona, and so we need to calm down on the screens. Or maybe it's, guys, we, we need to get a big, fat psalm up on our wall in our living room. So let's go to Hobby Lobby, and let's pick one out. We can pick it out together so we can see Scripture in our home. Maybe it's little thing, just leaving the Bibles out where you see them, remind you to read them. Uh, maybe it's You know, I don't know if you guys do this, but we can do music on our TV. And so maybe it's just letting your house be full of worship, you know. Maybe that's how you wake up in the morning. Uh, Just little things, small shifts in the right direction can make a big difference over time. Second thing I would say is that all things are possible through God. And and so don't doubt what God can do in your family. You're not too far gone. Uh, It's not too crazy. God can do amazing things in your home when we surrender to him and, and we go to him for help. Um, and so uh, my prayer is just that God would give us wisdom and direction as we, um, as we try to have healthy homes. We really, I know if I sat down at your table and I said, hey, do you want to have a healthy home? I know that we would all say yes. I know that's what we're trying to do. And so uh, let's, can we just commit to praying for each other as a church? Um, I, I believe that God wants us to have healthy homes. We can make a difference in our family. We can make a difference with the people that come into our home. Um, and so let's just pray for God to give us strength to, to make these small adjustments. And for some of us, big ones too. So I just have a couple questions I want you to wrestle with as we go into our, our time of response today. And so just a couple things I just wanted to kind of make it practical for yourself. What is shaping your home environment? What is shaping your home environment? If you, had to, if you had to write it down, what is shaping your home environment? Is it schedule? It could be screens. Um, is it anger? I mean, what is shaping your home environment right now? Um, I believe more than anything, God, he wants it to be him. He wants to be shaping your home environment more than anything. Um, but I, I do think that we get distracted easily and it's not always him. And so what is it that's not him that may be distracting you from having just a a healthy home environment. Second thing I want to ask you and want you to wrestle through is, how is your relationship with God affecting your home environment? How is your personal time with God uh, and your relationship with Him, how is that affecting the health of your home? Because if you're not ever spending time with God, um, that, that will definitely affect the way things are going at home. And then I guess the last, the last question I want you to just wrestle through is what small shift this week um, could you make to have a healthier home? Just a small shift. Uh, a small shift. Maybe, uh, maybe it's, hey, we're going to sit around the dinner table every night this week. No, that's a big shift. Maybe we're going to sit around the dinner table two nights this week. Whatever it is um, that is a small shift in the right direction, um, to, to move us towards a healthy home, a healthy, God-centered home. Well, guys, at this time, if you would, just close your eyes. I just would love to pray over you, and we're going to enter into a time of response. And what that means, nobody's going to have you go anywhere or do anything, um, but this is just a time between you and God. It's a time for you to say, God, what, what are my next steps in following you? What are my next steps in um, having a healthy home? Or, or just knowing you more. 
And so I just want to pray uh, for you, and then we're going to sing. And, and I would just say that during this time, if you need to pray with somebody, or maybe today you're here and you're like, I don't know Jesus, and I want to, uh, me and Justin, we're always in the back. We're always available to pray with you, and we would love to talk with you if, if you need that today. And so uh, pray with me this morning. God, I'm so thankful for this group of people and for all these families and, um, God, even all these kids that we have. And, God, we're just thankful um, that you care about the details of our lives. And, God, you meet us right in the middle of our mess, and you comfort us and you love us. And so, God, we just ask you now to speak to our hearts. God, give us the courage that we need to take the steps that you're leading us to take. We love you, Jesus, and we just, we just want to sing to you. We just want to talk to you. We just, we just give this time to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.